Welcome to the broadcast. I'm Dr. Duck Vong, world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books, and I'm helping, trying to help you guys get through this coronavirus. And it's my great honor and privilege today to have Sharon Lecter on as our, our guest. Sharon is an entrepreneur, author, philanthropist, international speaker, and just all around badass. Uh, <laughs> if you guys uh, love Rich Dad, Poor Dad, 1997, Sharon co-authored the international bestseller, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and has released 14 other books in the Rich Dad series. Over 10 years, she was co-founder and CEO, and she led the Rich Dad company and brand into an international powerhouse. But wait, there's more. In 2008, she was asked by the Napoleon Hill Foundation. If you're not familiar with Napoleon Hill, he's the one who wrote Think and Grow Rich. She was asked by the Napoleon Hill Foundation to re-energize his powerful teachings just as the international economy was faltering. She has since released three best-selling books in cooperation with the foundation, including Think and Grow Rich, Three Feet from Gold, Outwitting the Devil, which we're gonna hear about today, and Think and Grow Rich uh, for Women. And her newest title, Success and Something Greater, was released in September 2019. Uh, she's featured in 2017 movie, Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy, and the 2019 national TV production, World's Greatest Motivators. And so it is my honor and privilege to introduce the amazing Miss Sharon Lecter. Give it up, everybody. Woohoo! Ms. Sharon, how are you? I am fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be with you. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you for all the information you're getting out there to help people um, stay healthy during this oh, time. Man. Where are you calling from? You're in California? I'm in Arizona. Arizona. Paradise Valley, Arizona. Arizona. Yep. So I'd like to start off uh, these interviews by asking you, how has coronavirus affected your life? Well, certainly um, we have... Uh, Mike and I have been married 40 years and 15 years ago, we bought a survival property, a ranch out in the middle of the Tonto National Forest <laughs> and uh, it's called Cherry Creek Lodge. And we became cattle ranchers overnight and opened up a bed and breakfast. We have business retreats there, but I Are never I expected- you? I could come stay at your bed and breakfast? Yes, of course. <laughs> but I never expected to actually use it as a survival property. So my family and Michael, they've been up there for a month. I'm there and then I come back to do some broadcasts, but uh, mm -hmm. we're up there actually using it as a survival property instead of the six foot social distancing doc, yeah. we decided yeah. 300 miles sounded better. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> How great. And, and what is the um, condition currently there in Arizona uh, in terms of coronavirus? Are they have a lot of cases, not too many cases? What are the hospitals telling y'all? Well, certainly among all the states, we we have nothing compared to California and New York and New Jersey. Uh -huh. We have um, 35 cases in my zip code. So nope. we probably, I think, close to 100 deaths um, in Arizona. But yeah. we had the stay at home order and people, are, I think, are really observing that. And um, it's a time of just really staying safe. And, That's awesome. uh, so um, I want to talk about Rich Dad, Poor Dad, because I, I don't know if you know, but that was the first self-help book I read and it radically changed my life. And I read it during residency when I should have been reading medical texts. <laughs> <laughs> I bought all of the Rich Dad series. Yeah, and... Maybe why you're so successful. Oh, <laughs> there we go. I like that. I love that. So tell, I want to hear about the early days because I heard uh, you said in an interview a couple of years ago that you sold the first million copies out of your garage. Can you tell us what that was like? Well, off my dining room table, actually. Yes, we started the company here at my home. And um, in fact, it's the big table where we've launched multiple companies, a Rich Dad included, and um, Laura Langemeyer, Greg Reed, quite a few companies have been launched, launched from our big table. And um, when we started the company, we, we thought we were a game company and, and helping create the game. I told Robert we needed to probably write a brochure to help sell the game because he wanted to charge $200. Robert Kiyosaki. The yeah, Robert Kiyosaki. And, um, and I had met him at a beta test because he actually came to use my husband as an, to get the, the game patented. Mm -hmm. And so I met him at the first beta test. And he was basically sharing the same information I was teaching 
And mm-hmm. so it was a great way to teach the importance of buying, building and creating assets because assets are economic engines and those are what get you through times like today. And so I volunteered to help them commercialize it. Yeah, I'm sorry. For those who don't know, Rich Dad has a great way of explaining assets versus liabilities. I changed my thinking. Can you explain what that is? Assets feed you, liabilities eat you. Is that the one? <laughs> no, put money in your pocket, take money out. <laughs> Assets put money in your pocket, which mm-hmm. means they feed you. Mm-hmm. Liabilities take money out of your pocket, which means they eat you. So it's, um, and that's why one of the very controversial things we talked about in the book was your house is not an asset because. First time I heard that, it blew my mind. Yeah. We, of course, when we buy a house, we want it to appreciate. But we're, it's not making any money for us. It's costing us money. So in the you know in the technical term that we had for definitions, it's not an asset. Mm-hmm. And so the issue is instead of buying that big new house, start using some of that money to invest in assets, and then let the cash flow from those assets help you buy the big house. Mm-hmm. And that's Robert's uh, your your teachings about cash flow quadrants and mm-hmm. business entrepreneur employee and everything like that. So there's um, we, we have a pretty crazy economic situation right now. And it's been your lifelong passion to teach about financial literacy. And you said it was financial literacy month. Yes. And what's what's happened? What's going to happen to the E quadrant, the employee quadrant? What, what You want to talk about that real quick? Well, they're the ones that are going to be absolutely decimated because if you're only getting money as an employee and you're not working right now, obviously it's going to um, cause a lot of harm. And that's one of the things we teach. I teach people to move from the right side of the quadrant to the left side. And I have, um, I just used this on another interview. Here's my pitch. All right. <laughs> this is the cash flow quadrant. E and S is the left side of the quadrant. That's employee self-employed or doctors mm-hmm. built here. This is what we learn to exchange our time for money. This is what school teaches us, right? Mm-hmm. But on the right side is that as a business owner or an investor. And this mm-hmm. is what we teach people to do because this is when you have assets working for you. Economic mm-hmm. engines are on the right side. And so with what's happening in today's in- environment, is the people on the left side are being killed because they've lost their source of income, which is them. I want to repeat that one more time. The E and the S's are getting killed. And where does a doctor, which which letter, where does the doctor fit in? The S, right? So the specialist, doctors, specialist, specialist. Um, superstar, small <laughs> business. You know, that's, that's exactly this right here. Okay. Lawyers, doctors. Yep. So why is that? You know, because a lot of people watching would think that doctors are, you know, affluent or, or better off. So why are they not any better off than a regular employee? Well, because they've spent so much time becoming specialists and brilliant in what they do. Uh-huh. They haven't been taught about money. They haven't been taught. I mean, typically, doctors' offices are not that not run appropriately because they are not business people. Right. And so it's so important for them to acknowledge that and make sure they have people on their team to build the business around us so that they can not only be the doctor and the superstar, because I still make my money out of all four quadrants, right? I'm, oh. an, employee, I'm an employee of my own corporation. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a speaker, I get paid to speak, but I don't make nearly as much money on this side as I do on this side because I own lots of businesses and I have a lot of investments. And so the amount of money you can make on the left side of the quadrant mm-hmm. is limited. There's only so many days in the week, so many hours in the day. So many ER shifts. What you make on the right side is infinite <clears throat> because once you have an asset working for you, and that's the people that have a lot of assets are going to get through this pandemic much mm-hmm. better financially than anyone. Sure. Because you know, right now we talk about the fear. Mm-hmm. This is, we're in the trifecta of fear, fear of the illness, right? fear of the financial loss, and fear of isolation and they're all legitimate fears so you know understand that but our fear either paralyzes us or motivates us when you are paralyzed by fear you want to get under the covers and turn off the lights and that and you're the doctor but i'm going to say you will agree with the statement that hurts your immune system it does right yeah we study that yeah so instead of paralyzed Let's have that fear mobilize, you know, motivate us to do something, turn before, the fear into focus. Before I, lose, before I lose my train of thought, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, 
No, of but course. On your quadrant, what about the bee? Aren't bees businesses getting slaughtered too in this environment? Bees are getting definitely, well, it depends on which business, right? Restaurants, so, local yeah. restaurants. Yeah. Stuff like that. Well, this, a lot of um, small businesses are over here, right? Okay. But businesses are being hurt. But let, let's draw a comparison, doctor, because in 2008, our society was really, really sick. And so when it collapsed, it stayed down for a long time. Well, this, this is year, bigger. We were, our economy was really strong. Yeah. So yes, we had the rug pulled out from under us and things aren't going to snap back, but they're going to come back stronger and quicker than they did before because we were a strong and healthy economy going into this. But the small businesses, we don't know what the new normal is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people that are now working virtually may want to stay working virtually, right? There it may be a real impact on commercial real estate. But people that have small businesses in residential real estate, they're going to do just fine because people always have to have some place to live. Those small businesses that are restaurants, bars, it's going to take a while. Yeah, they're getting hit right Great now. <laughs> yes, yes. They're, you know, they're, they're going to get hit hard in the interim, but mm. that's where the financial relief is, right? And mm. that financial relief that's being offered right now is hopefully going to get them through it. But mm. once we turn the economy back on, okay, people are going to want to go to restaurants and bars. We so it's a matter of survival. We can, debate about that. we can debate about that a little bit. I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure. I'm a little bit worried because... Well, things will change once we get an antibody test so we can know if you have immunity to it or not. That that will change it. But it, go ahead. Well, I agree. There are certain things like um, stadiums. May, mm -hmm. you know, it may be a while for people who want to go sit in the middle of 72,000 um, people. Right. But I think restaurants, people are going to want to be um, out of their homes are going to, I think Americans are pretty resilient. Obviously you may want to not want to go to a restaurant where you're elbow to elbow with people. But, um, you know, I think, I think that part of the economy is going to come back and it's something that, uh, you know, we are social by nature and we yeah. have to get past this and there's going to be some, some re-entry time. And I think people are going to be a lot healthier because they're going to be more, um, germ aware. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think, Somebody yesterday on the news was talking about the you know the handshake is dead. That's kind of an interesting concept for me. Um, I teach having firm handshakes, and now it's like, well, you know, maybe maybe that's the future. Who knows? I'm a big hugger. I teach. Yeah, me too. Well, I call it full frontals. I do full frontal yeah. hugs, and that's <laughs> me messed up. Well, now you'll just have to do the hugs with your head, you know, face away. <laughs> So I want to I want to talk about real quick back to the fear aspect of it. Three fears: the fear of the disease, fear of the financial, which we talked about. Now, fear of isolation. What do you mean by that? Well, everybody's staying at home, mm -hmm. and so people that are um, social by nature. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm particularly worried about um, single people that are by themselves. I mean, they're seeing the suicide rate going up. Certainly with the isolation, the pressure cooker, I'm on the national board for child help. We've had a 31% increase in calls to our child abuse hotline. Wow. Um, so that fear of isolation by being alone or being compressed in a small space with people for a long time. And I think that that compounds the issue. You have to make sure you understand respect and and figure out how to keep everybody's uh, everybody happy. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, what would you say to, let's say the single mom mm -hmm. right now, who's really afraid she might not have a job when she goes back, what would you tell her to do right now if she was just sitting at home? Well, right now is not the time to sit and worry. I, I, my definition of the word worry is to pray for what you do not want, right? <laughs> and, so, and I'm a champion worrier, so I know I learned from the best. My mother was the queen of worry. But when you concentrate on what you don't want, that again is that negative attraction. And so I use that definition now to catch myself when I'm worried about something. I go, okay, stop, Sharon. Don't focus on what I don't want. Let's reevaluate and focus on what I do want. And so for young single moms, think about how you can 
you know, what can you do at home to make additional revenue? Um, there's tons of affiliate programs. I keep telling people there are people out there that you believe in that have affiliate programs so you can start you know, marketing on the Internet and supporting their products while you just decide what you want to do. Um, understanding. So it's so time to teach people, my following might not be used to the affiliate program because you're much more in the entrepreneurial space. But for the people who don't know, an affiliate program is somebody offers a product and, and you you share it and you'll get a commission, basically. Right. That's right. And it's something where um, there's lots of companies out there that have affiliate programs that mm -hmm. where you're basically a lot of people made a lot of money on Amazon as affiliates. You know, that's something that allows you to be virtual from your home. And it's, you're not building your own asset per se, but it allows you to figure out what you want to do and it helps you give the cash flow in the, in the interim. It's another stream of E basically. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, part of that is helping you do that. When we first um, met, when I first met Laura Langemeyer and most of your people may know her, she's a very famous author and she has lots of programs and she's the millionaire. secret. Yeah, millionaire maker. But when she first left corporate America, she didn't have any products. And so she came to me and I was her mentor and she started selling the board game cash flow on our products for Rich Dad while she, while she was defining and building her own business. And so it's that formula that I'm telling people, don't feel like you have to have everything done on your own. Um, because a lot of times it's like deer is in a headlight. No, but can you, can you, something that you believe in, can you share that with other people and end up getting paid for it? Yes, you can while you figure out what you want. And that's where we, in the book, Three Feet for Gold, I define the personal success equation and your people that are watching can go to six, um, Six, pers uh, personal success equation.com and download a way for you to look at your passions and your talents, power of association, taking the right action. And at the end of the day, having faith in yourself. And just by going through that process, you'll start feeling a little bit more confidence in what you want to do. So let me reset for you. Um, don't focus on worrying. Instead, focus on what you want. And then think of uh, alternative streams of income that could help ease you, bridge you over. And that could be a, something as simple as a product you already believe in that has an affiliate program you could do. Mm -hmm. Is that about right? Yes. And take the time. I mean, tomorrow would be tax day, where the, you know, if you, no matter where you, I know you have a lot of people on the line from all over the world, but this is the month many people think about money. And so analyze, sit down and analyze where your money went. Okay. So this would be a good time to budget, look at your budget and your finances. Okay. Yeah. And so if you look at it and you can look, say, well, you know, maybe I'm a little out of whack on entertainment or I'm a little out of whack on housing and start making, and it's not, you don't have to change everything. Just find one or two things that you can change that generates additional revenue. For those of you that have um, home mortgages or high interest credit cards, now is the time with interest rates at historic lows yeah. For you to see about refinancing so that you can start putting more money in your pocket and less interest being paid. That's right. That's right. So this, so what, what would you say some people who just for, and I was one of them for a long time, I just did not want to look at my budget. I didn't want to look at my bank statements. They were not good. I don't know if you know, but I got wiped out in 2008 with real estate holdings and I got hit by hurricane Ike and I lost a bunch of money and properties and, and I had, Creditors calling, bankers calling, sheriff's departments calling. I mean, all sorts of crap happening. And um, I just had a big phobia here, man. So I just did not want to sit down and look at my budget or where my money was going. There was no budget. I mean, it's just well, that was the fear. Biggest, you know, that was the fear. Fear of fear of the unknown. Right. And, you know, and what happens is if you actually take the time to look at it, even if the picture is bad, you actually feel better because at least you know. You know, that's that, that fear of the unknown. And it's really important once, because you know, my dad used to tell me a map doesn't do you any good if you don't know where you are <laughs> and where you, yeah, and where you want to sure. go. Yeah. And so if you don't know where you are financially, it's going to be really hard to figure out how to dig out of the hole. Mm -hmm. But once you figure it out, then just a, a few steps in the right direction can make a huge difference in the long run. Mm -hmm. And part of it is just facing it. And you mentioned about budgeting. I don't like that word either. Even the word is negative. Limiting, right? I always say, I always say instead of using budgeting, 
say, I want to create a spending plan. Everybody likes to spend money. Oh, right? I like that. It's the same I thing. Love that. A spending the power plan. of your words are so important. Wow, that's awesome. So, uh, so we're going to get extra sources of income, promoting products we like. We're going to take a look at our spending plan, our mm -hmm. spending plan, see what we can tweak. Uh, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Now, what what if there's someone says, um, you know, I'm just not like I don't have the confidence. I'm not good at selling. I'm not good at promoting. I don't have a network to promote to. You talked in the past about how you were always kind of a quiet power. Mm -hmm. And how did you find your voice? How did you step out of that and take ownership of Sharon Lecter? Well, I think you're at the end of the day, we are all the CEO of our own lives. So you have, you have the re and every one of us has had something that stopped us in our tracks somewhere along in our life. You obviously had a financial setback in 08. Uh -huh. um, in 2012, I lost my youngest son. And so nothing is the same anymore. I mean, if things that used to upset me don't bother me. Don't bother me. <laughs> you know, it just, I was literally living my life in neutral for several years. Uh, numb. I was going through life numb. Lots of lows, no highs. Uh, and um, in fact, three years ago, I almost made the decision to retire because I just wasn't getting the joy that I had. I got a lot of pushback. I think even from him, I could hear him say, get over it, mom, there's more for you to do. And so for everybody watching and listening, you're still here for a reason. You're still here. The things that you've been through, you survived. You can help others going through the same thing. Mm. We're all in this boat together. And the question is, are we going to allow ourselves to step back? Mm. Are you going to step into life? Are you going to step into taking control of your life? And using what you know to help others. Because once you do that, you talk about don't like to sell. I tell people, you know, instead of thinking about selling, think of yourself as serving. If you know that what you know and what you have can help someone else in their lives, shame on you for not serving them by telling them about it. Mm -hmm. It almost becomes like your duty to, yes. to tell them about the product. Yeah. And so by if you just, again, switch the way you think about it mm -hmm. from I'm trying to convince them, I'm trying to get their money. No, think mm -hmm. about what I have can help them. Mm -hmm. And it's a respect issue. You're going to support them by offering this to them. Even if they make the decision not to do it, you're still giving of yourself. And it makes it such a different impact. And if you're going into something saying, I hate selling. Do you think you're going to really be persuasive? Because you they're going to get that energy, that vibe from you that you don't really want to be talking about it. And it's something that's so important that you think I have, you know, growing up, my dad would ask me each night, Sharon, have you added value to someone's life today? Uh -huh. He's been gone 14 years, but I still ask myself that every night. And when you're serving other people and you're helping other people, it takes it outside of you and it makes you actually feel more confident because you're being of service. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. Um, we're going to talk about your, your book, uh, Outwitting the Devil. But, you know, I said that Rich Dad, Poor Dad changed my life. If in this situation right now, if you could gift somebody a book that would help them do through this time, what, which book would you gift them? It would be Outwitting the Devil, which, <laughs> which was written to help people get through the fear. Uh -huh. It was written back in 1938, but hidden away for 73 years. It was written when Napoleon Hill released Think and Grow Rich. And he said, even though people know what they're supposed to do, they don't do it. And so in a few short months, he, he wrote this book, but the title scared his wife to death. She worked at <laughs> the Presbyterian College. Yeah. And so she forbid it to be published and it literally was given to me to read. Um, I was probably the fourth or fifth person to read the manuscript back in 2009. Wow. And I changed my life when I read it. And I said, we need to get this out. And it really is a thesis of how fear holds us back. And yeah, it's so funny. I got it in an audio about two years ago. And oh. you're, you're on it in audio. And it's just so, it's so, it's a, can you tell us a little bit? It's like a trial, right? You're, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interrogation of the devil. Mm -hmm. And for the audio book, I made them get two different actors. So it's like a almost a radio drama. It the was, devil, yeah. the devil's oh, it's really, really compelling. It's really, yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. But in the book, if I may take a moment, I'm going to, on page 61, 
in this interrogation of the devil as to how do you mess people's lives up. He says, I control the space they occupy in their mind through fear. The six most effective fears are the fear of poverty, criticism, ill health, loss of love, old age, and death. And then the next question, which of these six fears do you most often use? The first and the last, poverty and death. At one time or another during life, I tighten my grip on all people through one or both of these. And what's happening right now? Fear of poverty, fear of death. So we are in the midst of finances. Yes, yes. And it's so, and it's, and it's, so the book helps you understand how to deal through that fear mm -hmm. and get through it. What do you think Napoleon Hill got these insights? Oh my gosh. He, he, he as much as he wrote it in 1938, it's as if it was meant for today. Mm -hmm. So I believe that there was a divine intervention, both in Thinking Grow Rich as well as in um, Outwitting the Devil. It was amazing. He was so a, a man very far ahead of his time. That's so awesome. So when Napoleon Hill Foundation tapped you to revitalize it, what was the mission with this book? Well, when I first, when I left Rich Dad in 2007, the, f the foundation found out and called me and asked me to help revitalize the teachings of Napoleon Hill because of what was happening to the economy in 2008. So I stepped in and the first book I wrote was Three Feet from Gold. Mm -hmm. And the goal was to bring the teachings of Hill to the younger generation, because at that time, most young people had no idea who he was. Many of them had never heard of Think and Grow Rich. And so Three Feet from Gold helped us start that, start in that direction. But when I found out Witting the Devil, it truly has been the book that has brought the teachings of Hill to the younger generation. And they love it. It's a little in your face. It's a little bold. But, um, but it really clarify, that a, it's not a religious text, right? It's no, not no. beating any religion or touting any religion, right? It's not a religious. In the book, he says, you can believe I'm talking to the real devil or a man-made devil. It's up to you. Will you derive any benefit from what I share? Mm -hmm. And I have Dr. You know, Dr. Michael Beckwith has did the afterward to give me a little spiritual cover. <laughs> but um, it really is a parable about how fear prevents us from accomplishing things in life. And what's important is he actually goes into what happens to us as children. And he, he takes on every taboo there is. Politics, sex, religion, education, alcohol, cigarettes. He talked about how bad cigarettes were you years before anybody knew they were bad for you. Oh, back then, the doctors were promoting it as helping yes. anxiety, stress relief, high blood pressure. I, I remember studying the old advertisements and it was yep. like, what? Yep. And, and he talks about how he gets involved in kids at a young age through cigarettes and mm -hmm. then through alcohol so that they don't, they give up freedom of their, of their brain. He says, talks about drifting, All right, Drifting mm -hmm. is when people that are not really definite as of what they want in life. And so they kind of go with the flow, right? Everybody can tell them, you know, what they ask them what they want to do. Oh, whatever, whatever. And that's, and he says 98% of the population are drifters. And he says, well, that's tell you, I'm sorry to interrupt you again, but that is very prevalent in the obesity population. The, my following the people who watch me, that is one a very common reason I hear people give when they, when I ask them, like, how, how did you become overweight? You're like, oh, I just did whatever everyone else wanted to do. I took care of everybody else. I didn't ever think about myself. So it really goes along with that. Yeah, absolutely. And then he talks about the non-drifters, that 2% who have control of their own mind. They know what they want. They're, they're, they're actually excited about taking the road less traveled. Uh -huh. Because I don't mess with them because they they're in control of their own mind and I can't get in there. But the, I got 98 percent of these other folks that I can mess with with fear. Uh -huh. And it's so important to just really it's 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 amazing the revelations that it has. You know, for instance, you're, you're doing something you're doing something now with technology and social media and Facebook to kind of bring this book to life more or make it more relevant. Can you talk about that? Yes, I just last week I decided, you know, I used to do a book um, study with the with it that we charge money for it. But last week I decided to launch a six week program and I have a private Facebook page that's called um, Crushing Fear by Outwitting the Devil. Mm. 
and y'all join and starting, to, um, I started last week, but it, the first part of the book is starting tomorrow on Wednesdays, which is three o'clock Eastern in the afternoon or noon Pacific US time. I'm going to be doing a in-depth mastermind book study. And in the, just the first three or four days, we now have over 800 people on part of it, but wow. it's about and we're not charging. It's totally free. So just go to Crushing Fear by Outwitting the Devil. My dear friend Lisa Copeland and I are doing this over the next five weeks because we really want people to participate and start realizing that even though you might be alone in your house, mm -hmm. you're not alone spiritually. Even though we're told to social distance, we don't want to emotional distance. And so we're reaching out to people, come with us and let's deal with the fear and figure out ways to take step to get rid of the fear. Mm -hmm. That's really, really amazing. Can you, um, you, you're a big proponent of the law of attraction. Can you kind of like reset that for us in a modern way since the secret like was launched 2005 or something? Well, actually, Napoleon Hill first wrote about the law of attraction, I believe, in 1916. Mm -hmm. But yet most people today know about it through the book or the movie The Secret. But Napoleon Hill talks about that in addition to just thinking good thoughts, you need to actually take good actions. But um, the law of attraction is exactly what we started off in our conversation. When you think negative thoughts, you attract negative results. If you attract, think positive thoughts, you attract positive results because your mind cannot hold positive and negative at the same time. And that's why my definition of worry, instead of worrying about what I don't want to have happen, I'm going to stop and think, okay, I'm going to focus on what I do want to have happen. Mm -hmm. And and there have been plenty of studies, and this is your, your field, not mine, but there's been plenty of studies that show that if you have positive energy, positive thoughts, you're going to help your immune system. If you have negative thoughts and worry and that you're going to compromise your immune system. So now more than ever, it's important to try and focus on positive things, taking focus, taking action to improve yourself during this time of both physical and financial stress. That's awesome. So what, what, what was that Facebook group again? If someone wanted to join? Crushing fear by outwitting the devil. Crushing fear, but out by outwitting the devil. That's awesome. And if they wanted, are you, um, we talked about an affiliate plan. Do you have an affiliate plan or anything? You're, okay. Yes. okay. So let's help some of these uh, people stuck at home. How, like what's your affiliate? Well, what would they do? How would they yeah, get Absolutely. Um, email me at info at Sharon .com. Angela can put it in the comments for us. Info at Sharon .com. We have an affiliate program for all of our products and our programs. Um, I'm not here to sell anything today. I'm here to basically give back, but we do have products that if you find things that you believe in and you want to support, we do definitely, we offer and invite all of you to become an affiliate. That's awesome. That's, I'm going to check that out myself. <laughs> I'm staying at home. So I want to take some viewer questions real quick. And here's a good one from Bo Hunter. How do we help our friends who are constantly negative? So absolutely, Bo. The first uh, the first step is to put your own cone of protection on, because when you have empathy, what happens is you go into a negative room and they pull you down, and that happened to me for years. In fact, I have a father in law who's always negative. You know, I go, "How you doing?" Oh, I'm hanging in there, right? Yeah. So now I, when I, he's still the same way, but when I walk and I go, "Well, that's good," because that's better than the alternative. He's ninety three, so you're still hanging in there. That's a good thing, and so your own cone of protection, not allow yourself to be pulled down by them. And if they start staying, seeing you stay up, then they're going to start saying, Hey, you know, maybe there's a better world for me. The other thing is sometimes, and this is going to sound like a marketing message, but sometimes there are people that you just talk till you're blue in the face and you can't get through to them. So I tell people, give them out winning the devil because they may actually see themselves. They actually might find things in there that will get them out of the of the um, issue they are. And most of the time, when we are in negative environments, we unless we change the environment, we're not going to get out of the negativity. And so, try and get them into different environments. Try and get them to somewhere where there is laughter, where there is music, to kind of like unplug them from their own negativity. 
along uh, the lines of what you're saying, Sabi Soto, who's a longtime follower of mine, says negativity is a form of fear. That's pretty insightful, huh? Yep, it is. And fear, you know, we talk about it's false evidence appearing real. Um, forget everything and run. Or in my world, it's face everything and rise. Because we can't say Ooh, face no everything and rise. You know, we can't say there is no fear. There is fear. We all have fear. I have fear right now. But what are we going to do with it? Are we going to let it pull us down? Or are we going to say, okay, it's there. What can I do? How can I prepare myself to come out of this even better on the other end? I love and that. that's, you know, and that's what I'm suggesting people do now. Take this time to focus on what you can do. So you're on the front of the wave, not being capsized by it. All right. Um, here you go. I like this one. Coco, you, there are so many careers out there. How do you know exactly that you are doing the right thing for your career growth? Great question, Coco. And I would suggest you start with the personal success equation.com because it's going to challenge you. It's going to ask you questions for you to determine, are you on the right path? Do you have the right people around you? Are you taking the right action? And do you have enough confidence and faith in yourself? For me, I've been, you know, I've been absolutely dedicated since December of 1992 to financial literacy, financial education, and supporting people to go from the left side to the right side of the quadrant. It's never changed. I'm as passionate today as I was back then. Mm -hmm. And so I don't ever work a day in my life. It's not work. It is the fulfillment of my mission. And when you have that kind of fulfillment and you know you're on the right path, mm -hmm. everything else falls into place. Yeah, you know, that's awesome advice. And uh, for me, my life really changed. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the flickering lights are, is reflection of uh, off my pool. <laughs> I'm sitting next to my pool. But for me, my life changed when I realized I needed a mentor. I needed mentors. And so I got people like Greg Reed, who are, is a mutual friend, and meeting people like you and Frank Shankwitz and really changed my life. So maybe a, when, when, when would you go after a career mentor, do you think, Sharon? Oh, from day one. I mean, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in trouble. Oh. People, who, it, the studies, it's been proven. If you have a mentor, you're going to be more successful. As a business owner, you're going to make more money at the bottom line. As an individual, you're going to feel more fulfilled and you're going to speed up your trackway to success because mentors are going to open doors, they're going to introduce you to people. They're going to help steer you around the pitfall so you don't have to learn on your own, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, somebody yesterday said to me, a, a smart person learns from their mistakes. A genius learns from other people's mistakes. I love that. <laughs> and so a mentor is going to help you learn from other people's mistakes so you don't have to have that problem and speed you on your way to success. I, I made so many mistakes. We're going to go to a speed round real quick, and that's when I just do a lot of questions for you really quickly. All right. I want sure. one medical one for me. Sid Wyeth wants to know, will IV vitamin C help with fluid and lungs along with ventilation? How about heavy dose vitamin C? So what he's talking about is uh, when you're sick in the intensive care unit on the ventilator, a lot of times the doctors are getting vitamin C intravenously. So that's really, it helps with uh, freeing up free radicals. Uh, that's what vitamin C does, but oral vitamin C, just taking it will not have the same effect. You just really pee that out. Uh, here's something you might want to answer or not answer. Scott wants to know, do you believe the numbers they're reporting? Uh, do you think they're being manipulated for political reasons? What do you think, Sharon? You've, you've been in a few white houses. Weren't you on like the president's council for literacy or something? Yes, I was on um, both President Bush and Obama's um, finance, President's Advisory Council for Financial Literacy, so nobody can throw stones at me. But um, <laughs> at the same time, I, you know, the, it, I truly believe I'm, I'm really disheartened by the lack of honest press that we have in the world today. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, I think we talk about um, things being manipulated for political reasons. I think there's a lot of ma manipulation going on. I think there's a lot of false hope put into numbers um, without the evidence to back them. And right now we're in a world of unknown. And so, you know, you may predict a million and a half cases and now we have 500,000. Well, thank God we only have 500,000 because people actually did what they were supposed to do and stayed home. Right. I'd much rather be wrong about the million and five because we have only 500 than be right 
you know, so at the end of the day, we yeah. need more common sense. It's not the political reasons. It's not the manipulations. Yeah. It's a lack of common sense in everybody's brain that yeah. we have to just stand up and say, stop the baloney. Yeah. Let's do what we need to, to make this country healthy, both physically and financially and stop the partisan crap that's going on in Washington. I totally agree with that. I would add that I teach it like a filter. We all have filters or lenses that we want to like filter a story through. So we will manipulate numbers and data or the story to verify or assuage our ego and what we already believe. So if people believe that this is a conspiracy, they're going to find conspiracy in the numbers. If people believe this is hype, they're going to find hype in the numbers. So I, I think it's really a matter of people just trying to adjust their beliefs. It's also part of the fear, I think, Dr. B, because I think mm -hmm. people, when they're fearful, they lash out. Uh -huh. And so instead of dealing with their own fear, they try and tear other people down. And I see it over and over and over again, particularly right now. Some of the comments that I read on people's you know posts is like, I thought I knew this person and they've got such vitriol coming out of them. And, and I think it's from their fear. Yeah. Um, I heard Korea, Stephen Barron says, I heard Korea is testing positive for the uh, virus again in recovered patients. That's only really anecdotal. We don't really have data. We don't, you, to do that, you'd have to have a patient who positively tested for coronavirus, got better, and then positively tested again. And I think in today's world, we sensationalize, we jump to conclusions. So um, that's probably the case with Korea. I don't think we can really say until we know um, the real answers. So Eileen Fry is a big fan of mine and looks, she goes, dear God, she's good. <laughs> I guess she's talking about you. Thank you, Eileen. I appreciate that. Yeah. Sue First is also a longtime fan of mine. How long, Sharon, do you think this is going to last months to a year or more? Well, great question, Sue. I think we're going to see recovery very fast in certain industries and very slow in others. Um, I think there's going to be a slow recovery in airlines, certainly an even slower one in, in, um, in cruise ships. We're going to see, I think we're going to see a pretty fast return on the financial markets and in the health markets. I think we're going to see a fast recovery in because because it's been slapped down so far, less than more than 50 percent down in, in energy. Um, wow. Yes, we're going to have a lot of reserves, so it might be months as opposed to right away. Um, obviously, there are certain areas, like I mentioned early in the broadcast, I would not be investing in commercial real estate because we don't know what the commercial environment is going to look like when this is all done. Brick and mortar is going to be hurt. Yeah, but residential rental properties, B and C properties are going to be very strong. Storage facilities are state, going to remain strong. Mm. So there are certain markets of the industry that are going to come back really, really fast. And those are the ones that you need to be looking at. And, you know, the most successful businesses solve a problem or serve a need. And so rather than worrying about outside's economy, you need to worry about your economy, your wallet. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with every dollar that comes in? Okay. With every paycheck you get, it's not what you do for your paycheck. It's what you do with your paycheck that determines your financial future. So what are you doing? If you find yourself right now without enough emergency fund, all right, mm -hmm. take the lesson. So when money starts coming back in, Tighten your belt. Let's get an emergency fund built up so you can protect yourself should something happen again in the future. But look for something that you can do that solves a problem or serves a need. We have a lot of those right now. Yeah. And yep. serving that, there's nothing wrong with making money while doing good. Mm -hmm. So start doing good and become successful. A lot of people have a block there when it comes to the making money part because they think they should do service for free. How do you and help them overcome that block? And a lot of it is, um, again, I'm going to say outwitting the devil. We talk about money, right? When you're growing up, we're not taught about money in school. And so what do your parents say about money? We can't afford it. Pinch your pennies. Money doesn't grow on trees. Save for a rainy day. All of those comments are negative. So as a child, you hear money negative, money negative, money negative. And so you end up with this subconscious thought process of scarcity. You fear never having enough money. And then when you start becoming successful, all of a sudden you're afraid you're going to lose it. And once you can identify where that came from, 
you can start releasing it. Because I truly believe we live in a world of abundance, not in a world of scarcity. Mm -hmm. But until you can unlock those things inside your subconscious, they're going to chase you and you need to get rid of them. And I'm sure you're really helping people in your, your Facebook group there, that crushing fear by outwitting the devil group, huh? Oh, absolutely. That's exactly why I'm doing it. Please, everybody join Crushing Fear by Outwitting the Devil in the Facebook group, because I really want people to feel an open forum to know you're not alone uh -huh. and see what other people are doing to deal with that fear. Because you might, somebody may post a comment that sits right home, something that you can do too, that's going to help get you out of this. Somebody else can tell you, you know, what they're doing to keep physically fit that maybe you can do as well. So a way to give your brain the opportunity to soak in other people's uh, remedies that might help you as well. That's awesome. Shout out to Sergio. He's in Spain having a hard time over here, but things are getting better now. I hope we can stay, continue this way. And your thoughts, you know, yeah, you're in our thoughts, Spain. So good luck. Um, oops. Do you think the vaccine is already out there, but they just hide it for personal interest? Absolutely not. It takes a long time to develop a vaccine. So they go through a process where they identify candidates and there's like 12 or so candidate, possible candidate vaccine, vaccines. And then they have to go through different phases to test it. One, the first thing is just for safety. They're gonna test it on 40 people, make sure this <laughs> didn't kill your ass. Uh, and then before they can do the second phase, that safety alone lasts several months. And then efficacy, does it work? Because you want to make it sure it works and that's much longer. So we're really looking at uh, honestly 18 months. People are saying 12 months, but really it's going to be 18 months for sure. Well, I think they're trying to fast track as much as they can, but they also have a responsibility to make sure they don't miss the steps to make sure it's safe. So. Karen Morrison, what was the group name? Crushing Fear and? Crushing Fear by Outwitting the Devil. Outwitting it's a Facebook the devil. group, yeah. Crushing Fear by Outwitting the Devil. Yeah, that's excellent. Let me see how I know I can get this uh, comment off here somehow. Uh, all right, well, I'll just leave that there. I can't seem to figure out how to end that comment. Um, what I want to do with you real quick for the last couple of minutes that we have is to, um, I want to do a, like a quiz you on your mm -hmm. current knowledge. You feel down? Sure. This will be easy. I'll take it easy on you, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, Coronavirus, true or false, Sharon? Coronavirus is um, a DNA yeah. virus wrapped around a lipid bilayer. I have no idea. <laughs> that is not an issue. I just know that it's true out there. And it's been, and it, okay. uh, is, is coronavirus DNA or RNA? I have no idea. <laughs> I was going to make this a drinking game. <laughs> I want to use this as a point, Dr. B. I don't need to know that stuff. All I need to know is how to prevent myself from getting it. I, I need to know how to help people with their money. You need to help people with their health. So together, well, we make a great team. There you go. So find someone to augment your, your weakness. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I finally figured out how to turn that off. Um, so it's actually a, an RNA virus. It's an RNA virus. All right. True or false? Fever is a common presenting symptom for someone with coronavirus. Yes, that much I know. It, it's actually false. Only 45% present with fever. High oh, well, the people that I know that have it have had high fever. Usually high fevers come when you're pretty far infected. Yeah, the um, three or four people I know have all had high fevers, so. True or false? <laughs> um, loss of taste is a common side effect of coronavirus, smell and taste. What do you think? Huh. I have no idea. Just give me a guess. <laughs> I like to have the right people on my team. It's like it's like um, Henry Ford. No I don't need to know the answers. I just need to know who to call. So you're going to tell me, doctor. <laughs> so it's true. Uh, it turns out that a very common presenting um, side, side problem with coronavirus is the loss of smell, which it leads to the loss of taste. A lot of people don't understand, don't realize that your taste buds, your taste is actually 75% smell. Well, that I knew because I have very bad sinuses. So <laughs> it my taste all the time, so. All right, all right. True or false, true or false. Low back pain uh, can be a common 
symptom of coronavirus? The people that I have talked to that have had it have not com have not complained about that. Yeah, so it turns out low back pain is oddly is a common symptom. So ER doctors are starting to to, to look at that. Um, last question: True or false? We are all going to survive this and come out stronger on the other end. Absolutely true. Except for those <laughs> that get the virus and have problems. The rest of us, as long as we pay attention to what we do with our health and we take care of ourselves financially and we focus, we turn our fear into focus for the future, yeah. we'll come out of this a lot stronger. That's awesome. Well, Ms. Sharon Lecter, it's been a joy and privilege to have you on today. You're amazing. I just want to take this moment to honor you, everything you've done for years. And Even though I blew your chest? <laughs> you failed that part, but that's okay. But <laughs> I've uh, never failed a test in my life. It's <laughs> So I was a straight A student. So you've now, you have now crippled me for life. <laughs> Literally 20 years ago, I read Think and Grow Rich. And now I have the honor and privilege to interview the co-author. Um, I mean, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I have the privilege to honor, to interview uh, you on the show. So it, uh, how funny. So next time I get to quiz you on finance. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how we do. So I just want to <laughs> honor all your hard work, your legacy, your career, and everything you do for humanity and how much you've helped the financial literacy of this world. So is there one last final message you'd like to tell the viewers? There's almost 800 people watching. Well, for all of you watching, please um, reach out and get personalsuccessequation.com for your own um, edification, for you to understand what it is that you want, because you are the you are the CEO of your own life. You're in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. So you can allow yourself to be parked in an underground garage mm -hmm. with your head hiding, or you can go into the light and get prepared, gassed up, ready to go to be able to conquer the new new, new um, environments that we have in front of us. Unless you train yourself to recognize the opportunities, they're going to pass you by. And so what we're trying to do it is to help you identify those opportunities, prepare yourself so that when the doors open and we can go back out in the world, you're prepared to be there to be successful and to create a new chart for yourself. Because mm -hmm. We don't, nobody knows the exact answer as to when we're going to be open for business again. But I can tell you, some of us are going to be more prepared than others. And I want to support you in becoming prepared when those, the doors are open again, so that you can create the success that you deserve. I love it. I love it. That's amazing. You know, I had a professor say one time that I will never see what the mind does not know. That's perfect. That's good stuff. All right, Ms. Sharon Lecter, thank you so much for your time.